All right, I believe we're live. Molybdenum to you. <laughs> Molyb. I can't, I can't say it now. <laughs> Molybdium. Molyb- <laughs> Molybellum. Yeah, I just threw it out there. I don't know how close I got. Molybdenum. Molybdenum. All right. For those of you on the, well, we do have some people coming in already, but for those of you on the replay, thank you for uh, checking out this video. Uh, hope you enjoy it. I hope you have a good time. Hope you come back. Uh, Thank you to everyone who's been interacting with the videos, the live streams as they become replays. And um, just uh, it's it's really great seeing all the growth that the channel has been having. So thank you. Uh, I see TJ Autocross is here. And I do believe you made it first. At least, TJ, you were the first one to comment. So we can say that for certain. Uh, Basement Aquatics, Dave's here. Not so fast. Not so, oh, don't all. say it so fast. Is that what you're saying? I have to say it fast <laughs> or it doesn't come out at all. It just becomes Molly. D- <laughs> Welcome everybody on the replay crew. Welcome those who are here early. We've got Basement Aquatics, TJ Autoqu- Autocross. I can't speak at all now, apparently, after trying <laughs> to pronounce we broke different it. things. And then we've got the Zen Ginger, our one of our wonderful mods. Thanks for joining us, as always. Yes, it's nice to have Zenny here. Thank you, Zenny. We we're gonna have a we're gonna have a good time uh, tonight as we talk about. Oh, I didn't put up the image. Here, let me do that. Oh, it's not even loaded to the stream. Amateur. As we talk about how to furt a tank. And this, just in case you didn't know, this live stream is at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I think you, uh, I still can't see where it says, where it says the the time zone. I couldn't find a bigger (laughs) font. I was limited. That's not true. I could have gone bigger. I thought about just making it like the whole background say Eastern. Just for fun. (laughs) Just for fun. Just for fun. Because we, uh, Mitch and I are in different time zones and we always get everything mixed up yeah it's it's always a lot of fun yeah it, it definitely is basement aquatic says oops i farted <laughs> <laughs> yep tj autocross says this is a topic i need can't quite seem to get it right i i am not far off i am learning some uh, I, i'll tell you the research that i've done for this live stream probably was some of the best help that i've had so i I read and watched and listened to a number of individuals talk about it. And you know what's funny about uh, a qu- hobbyist is it you know you could you could ask you could ask five different aquarium hobbyists about fertilizers. You'd get like twenty answers. Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's the thing that's difficult about ferts is just. It's such a hard, it's one, I, in my opinion, it's one of the harder things in the hobby to nail down with plants yeah. just because yeah. it's so hard to determine, you know, what, you know, every tank's different. Every tank has different plants in different quantities and those plants take different amounts of fertil- fertilizers. And then being consistent mm-hmm. when you do find where you need to be, that is difficult too. There have been times I've been pretty dialed in. And then something happened and it get out of control and then just getting it back can be difficult. So we will talk about all that. Uh, I saw Regina Phalanges is here. Hello and welcome. Uh, Sorry about last week. We were going to go live last week. We were prepared to do this live stream, this topic last Mm -hmm. week. Um, It was fall break for my kids. And so we planned a day up in the mountains. Uh, We're not too far from the Great Smoky Mountains. So we went up there. And so did everyone else because <laughs> it took over an hour to get from the city limits to River Road. If you're familiar with Gatlinburg, I don't know how many of you all are, but it was crazy. And then we were, you know, we were there for a while. I, I just, you know, we got in just in time to get ready for bed. It was, uh, it was one of those crazy evenings. So sorry about that, but we had a good time. So I'm not really sorry, but, but I hated missing. And we've also other... got Lady Rorschach Shack in the Rorschach. Yeah, I've practiced that joining. name a few times. <laughs> it, it's funny how 
some how something can like with molybdenum molly <laughs> you said it right one time and we both were like that's it um it's funny how something like that when you get on a camera just does not come to you molybdenum molybdenum you see as I soon have, as you say it i know i have it to, doesn't I, have two l's <laughs> it, i think it's the b and d next yeah. to each other that just really throw it off yeah, and and most people don't have no idea what we're talking about with this word. They're they're <laughs> probably googling it like we had to. Um, that's okay. We're we're about to we're about to jump into that. We're going to give a little bit of time for some more people to come in and just to kind of catch up since we did take last week off. Um, we were supposed to also talk about the swap last week because almost how long ago was it now? <laughs> Uh, two weekends the, ago now two weekends ago that's that's crazy that time's flying by like that uh glitch aquatics is here hey everyone hello glitch aquatics i like that name lurking and watching all right uh so uh we had our swap it was the 8th october the 8th and it was a good time i have a video that i'm working on for it um i did not get a lot of footage at the swap but i got some and i can talk about it so i won't go into a lot of details tonight about the swap because it's going to be in that video and i'd like for you to watch that video when it's done <laughs> but we had a great time i stayed busy but you know one thing that i will say um we had some phenomenal uh, volunteers at this swap the first time we did a swap it was just um you know it was just the board members that were pretty much working the swap, you know, um, and it was stressful and difficult. And when I say that a couple, two or three of them had tables themselves. So, you know, it was, it was chaotic the first one and I was looking forward to it. I knew was, I was going to have fun. I was going to be busy, but having those volunteers made all the difference because I actually got to talk with people and walk around a little bit, do a little bit of shopping. I did get some things, um, I did, man, I, so one thing I'll say, um, with all the other things I'm saying, but <laughs> one thing is that I told my wife that the really, I don't need any fish. I might buy some shrimp. I was undecided. Um, I'm, I'm kind of given the 25 a little bit of time with the shrimp. Cause I feel like shrimp, that tank needs to be established. Uh, so, but anyway, I figured I might buy a plant. But I really was had my eye or had my mind on not my eye my mind on some driftwood because we have a member of the club uh, JT who's in this chat a lot of times uh, who actually does collect driftwood on one at one of the local reservoirs and he brings it to uh, the swap and so I knew there was going to be some driftwood there and so I was like that's probably the one thing I'll buy and I tell you. I don't think Farron's here. Um, we have some just amazing, you know, we're the volunteer state. We have some amazing members. And um, this, this guy came up and he was, he was already at JT's table. And I went up and I was, I was talking with JT about, oh, what would fit in the 75? What do I need? And he had a couple of pieces that I was like, oh, I might have to choose between those. I was like, you know what? I'm going to walk around a little bit when I come back. If whichever one's left, that's the one I'll take. And, uh, and Farron was like, nope, I'll take that one. I want to see that one in his 75. It'll be a good video. Go ahead and, and uh, put that one back for him, JT. And he, so he bought me a piece of driftwood. And uh, JT's so amazing. He was like, you know what? I'm going to throw in the other one too. So he gave me the other one. So I got two pieces of driftwood to go in the 75 um, just from the kindness of people in the club. And, and it was like that for me all day. I, I keep saying, I tell people, we, we tell people in the club and I tell myself this all the time, try to give more than you take. The bar is just too high. I cannot find ways to outgive our members. It's just amazing. So uh, just phenomenal people. And uh, we had a good time. I did see a crypt that I wanted. Um, and I'll talk about that in my video. I, I'll save that for the video. Cause that is it. absolutely awesome. I didn't know y'all got you got in on some driftwood that is phenomenal jt's always got some really good looking really good looking stuff oh yeah there there were a few that i had you know i had my eye on them when i got there uh all things fish is here hello all things fish 
Garcia um, Aquatics. Garcia Aquatics. Welcome, welcome. Hope y'all are doing well. Looks like All Things Fish is studying for work tomorrow. That does not sound too much fun. I just finished yeah. up with work myself. Best that leave work at work. <laughs> you got to try your best, though. You can't always do it. It doesn't work that way. Makes it a little difficult when your work phone also happens to be your personal phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Regina Phalanges. Listen, listen. I bought a used 40-gallon. Every single Seachem Furt came with it. Oh. I use Easy Green. Not sure what to do with all these bottles. <laughs> I did dose potassium last week. The rest, no idea. Uh, we'll talk about that some. I um, if are you ready to jump into the first conversa conversation? That tongue t twisted me. <laughs> yeah, we can, and that's something we'll we'll touch on. You can definitely, you can make fertilization as simple as you want it, or you can get every single nutrient known to man. Yeah. and just go crazy with it um it's really just that's one of the things that's cool with the aquarium hobby it is as much as you want to put into it and i'm not the type that likes to dose every single type of nutrient because for one i can't keep up with it yeah <laughs> um but there are certainly people who are successful with it yeah and that's one of the things i said at the beginning was uh, one of the most difficult parts for me is the, that consistency hey. because your plants, it's easy on your life, right? You can get a timer. Yeah. You, maybe your plant already has a timer. So you said it, it's, it's doing that all the time. Um, you know, it's, that's easy, but the fertilizer can really throw you off if you're not consistent with it. Yeah. It's, I would, I, I think I mentioned earlier, fertilization with plants is one of the most complicated things you can possibly it's as complicated as you want to make yeah, it. It can be. So um, as we jump into this, I, I just want to share a little bit of my own experience with fertilizer. Um, I had a small tank and I decided to get into plants because I saw online that plants make it to where you don't have to change your water as often. <laughs> and that sounded amazing to me because I was trying to balance this 10 gallon tank so I bought a few plants. I think I got like three or four plants. All I know now, all low light plants. Didn't really know that at the time. Um, yeah, so it did not go well. I lost all of them. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, was, I read that the fish poo would feed these plants, but it didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't work. Um, I did try plants one other time uh, in the 10 gallon and it was disastrous. It was just a mess. I'd tear it down, wash everything, um, toss it out, start again. When I got the 25, I was like, okay, I, I know enough now. I know about fertilizer. I'm going to do plants. So I bought, and this is a little bottle. Um, ooh, where's it at? I bought some Sea Kim Flourish. <laughs> I had a big bottle at the time, but this is, I don't know how I ended up with this little bottle. Yeah, um, that looks I actually like that would last me about a day <laughs> yeah i had to check the expiration date on it because it's been in my underneath my tank for so long it's still got another year on it so i don't know maybe maybe i'll use it for some stuff um so but yeah uh so i i tried that no luck did not work out for me dosed it based you know i dosed it based on what it says on the back and i'm going to read this here's the directions uh, use one capful for each 60 gallons once or twice a week for smaller doses. Please note that each cap thread is approximately one milliliter. Refrigeration is recommended. Didn't know that. Three months after opening. Hmm. Didn't know that. It's been, a, it's been, it's been out for a while, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, those directions, they're not very good mm -hmm. um, because it tells you to use it doesn't tell you how much. It doesn't tell you what you need. Um, and there's a reason for that because they don't know how much you, you need. It, you've got to determine that. And that can be frustrating and difficult. And it was for me. And it wasn't until I found a all-in-one fertilizer that I had any success. And there are better ways to do it. There are ways that can save you some money um, over an all-in-one. But for ease... It's hard to beat it. I mean, I know there's times you get something like I need to be dosing potassium 
uh, for the Java Fern. I know that. I know I killed Java Fern because I need more potassium. Um, I, I just need to add more potassium, apparently. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing that you'll notice if you look at really any fertilizer. The recommended dosages are very vague. And that's because, <laughs> like with all things in aquariums, everyone's tank is different. Yep. Different types of plants need different nutrients. They uptake at different rates. So you, it's really, it's one of the more trial and error parts of the aquarium, mm -hmm. in my opinion, because you just kind of have to, you know, eyeball it almost. You know, you have yeah. you start out with that recommended dosage. Yeah, Actually, that's I would, smart. in my mind, I would start below that. Um, well, and you know, I've read that a lot. Um, over the last couple of weeks that, and I didn't know this, that when you first add plants, um, it's, they really need to establish themselves before you start dosing. You're really wasting um, the fertilizer in the beginning, especially if you're using too much, right? And then um, you're also promoting algae. So that's why a lot of us have issues with algae when we get plants for the first time, because we weren't ready for the fertilizer yet. Right. Yeah. Whenever I set up a new tank, I typically wait about two, two weeks, give or take that's before I start perfect. fertilizing just, but that, that's also something that I've come to kind of eyeball and be like, okay, it's about time that I need to start adding ferts. There's not really a, a you know, I mean, you can get real scientific with it, but no one's right. got the time to look. Okay. So I've got five stems of Ritala. I have two <laughs> Java fern. That means that I need X yeah. amount of, you know, nitrogen it's very difficult to get exact numbers um and right. that's why um one of the main fertilization methods you know the estimative index is yep. pretty popular where you just give everything in excess speaking of which that is what all things fish meant uh i e i dose estimated index and keep thrive on hand for my wife to dose when i'm out of town uh we'll talk about that some now so this was going to be one episode and we got crazy in our notes. Uh, we share a yeah. document that we keep our notes in and it just kept growing and growing. And I was like, man, there's no way we cover all this and talk to people in the chat. Let's break it up to at least I'm, I'm going to say it, but it might change at least three episodes. So it'll mm -hmm. be three live streams. This one is just kind of a uh, introduction to fertilizer. Uh, and I saw lady Rorschach was saying that, that was a really good deal. It also came with a Python filter, heater, decorations. The guy said it's a beautiful hobby, but too much work. Yeah, there's a, you know, that's when you find those deals. I've heard stories yeah. of those deals. Uh, I wanted to point out Garcia Aquatics, Hey Scruffy and T TK, Tanner, where are you guys located? Um, I am in Knoxville, Tennessee. And I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, part-time Knoxville. I was actually in Knoxville this past weekend seeing some family. Yeah. Um, so I bounce back and forth, but my home, I guess my home base is Nashville at the moment. Yeah. Um, let's see, going through the comments or the chat a little bit more. Looks like we've also got Craig's Catfish Cave hey, Craig. joining us. Thanks for joining. Good to see you again. All Things Fish says it can be as much or as little work as you make it. Yes, I definitely <laughs> agree with that. Uh, he's still, th they're still talking about sea chem. Use it to water your lawn. <laughs> I, 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 I don't funny. dislike sea chem. It's not my go-to. I've used it's it. It's mild. Past. I, I would, I would tend to agree with that. Yeah. And then Lady Rorschach says, "Yes." Oh, well, <laughs> Lady Rorschach says, best GH booster, Mitch and Tanner. I'm currently using Easy Green and having good luck with my plants, but with a current snail die-off, I suspect too low of a GH level. So the first question I would ask before yep. we get into GH is what type of snails are they? If they're ram's horn or bladder snails or something like that, and you've been feeding less, their populations will dwindle and grow very quickly with the amount of food you're feeding. Mm -hmm. But if you want to raise your GH, get some a little more calcium in the water, I would generally just throw a cuddle bone in there. Um, 
some crushed coil, coral maybe. Um, I know you can also bake some eggshells and feed that to them if you're seeing some calcium deficiencies. Um, but as far as a general just GH booster, that is – my water is pretty hard. I know Mitch's mm -hmm. is yeah. rock solid. So it, I, I don't know if we'd be the people to – you right. know to ask but there may be some people in the comments that may know yeah yeah regina flangey says fertilizer too soon just feeds algae that is true exactly uh i'm getting a ghkh kit to verify the levels but still looking ahead into brands uh yeah i i i did that as well i bought the um api individual kits for those and just found out that my water was hard because every <laughs> every test that I use, I'm off the chart every single test. So I got those. I was like, surely these will tell me off the chart. What do I do? Uh, it's good for live bears. Although I will say, um, recently my pH, I noticed my pH was a little bit lower in the 75 because, um, well, I'm, I'm getting ready to do those rocks, and and I'm I'm thinking I want to know where everything's at before I start mm. putting stuff in it. And so I was, I tested the pH and it was low. So I went to my tap and tested it and my water is lower than it has been. So, oh, Basement Aquatics had a good question. Uh, root tabs that we're talking about? Touch on root tabs a little. Yes, that is the yes. plan. Later in the stream, we'll be talking about different ways to fertilize your aquarium. And Mitch, on the note of your uh, pH levels dropping, uh -huh. Depending on your water source, it's likely a reservoir where you're getting your water from. There will be seasonal changes, okay. um, and that can be one thing that that drops. Um, depending on the season, more um, minerals and organics and things can be leached. You know, can yeah. come into the reservoir that your source water, and also the water treatment plant where your water is coming from may be doing some seasonally. Um, varied treatment methods. Yeah. Vinox so, oh, I messed it up. Vinoski. Vinoski <laughs> is here. Welcome. And so, yeah. Oh, here we go. Uh, oh, it jumped on me. Lots of changes in parameters in tap water at season, at season change. Oh. Yep. yep. Yes. Yeah, I uh, know. Um, Tanner beat me to some... it. <laughs> 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 I know some local, um, well, some places in East Tennessee, depending on, you know, manganese will actually spike in the um, summer, for example, yeah. and they'll feed carbon um, to try and, you know, eliminate that odor and taste. Um, oh, okay. it, the water's not, the water is not bad for you as, as it comes out, but they just, you know, people don't, if it smells a little funky, looks a little not perfectly clear people can be a little concerned understand especially with how expensive water is around here <laughs> yes <laughs> which we All can right. talk about where your water comes from off uh, i know i don't, I, don't <laughs> want to know. I, I know that i don't want to know um <laughs> ram's horns they died off after only two days in the tank with cat snail food they just wouldn't eat and thrive hmm. so just a you know one thing that i may may ask have you ever used a copper treatment in your tank um oh, i know invertebrates someone. can be sensitive to that if you're dosing fertilizers they shouldn't have much copper in them but if they do you may be, want to be aware of that you may you want to use a uh, you know shrimp another invertebrate are very sensitive to uh copper and different heavy heavier metals um and it could be, you know, if you've only had them for two days, they could, if they were shipped, you know, there's a lot of different reasons. Wait, I, I wouldn't blame the GH in just yeah. two days, uh, but that's yeah. just, that's just my two cents. Yeah, hopefully it's a it's a good fish store, um, and you can take them in there. Maybe if you got them from a fish store, you might have got them from a fellow hobbyist, or if it's like me, they came in on from one of Tanner's plants. <laughs> but I love these guys, love the ram's horns. Yeah, I have ram's horns in uh, all my tanks. Yeah. Oh, um, I, I no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I never bought them though. I can't quite remember where I, where they came from. Yeah. Uh, I have not Tanner. I can look into it though and see what the results might lead to. Uh, 
yeah i I know copper with with shrimp and with snails can sometimes be an issue Um, yeah it could be if you days just if you dose the medication for um some fish some of those can contain um some copper um but then all things fish says i'm not aware of any commercial ferts targeted towards aquarium then when dosed according to the directions will provide enough provide enough copper to be detrimental to inverts yeah i would i i agree with that um i've not seen any i know there's some that are targeted more towards tanks with shrimp um because they have lower levels but i i I i've not found i use the same fertilizer in all my tanks um i use the what is it nylock g thrive yeah i i like like i said or like tanner said i've never had to mess with my gh just because like if anything i would want to lower it but i i I don't know uh but i do see that you did get some help uh from someone else so hopefully that works out and and keep us keep us updated on that i'd be interested in hearing yeah and if they were in transit for almost a week from uh from new york they were good condition alive on arrival just didn't thrive yeah um I don't know a week a week in transit you know is not terribly long but it is kind of getting towards that depending on how they were packed um i i'm I'm not quite sure it could that could be that may be something that you may want to look into um but more than likely you've probably got some eggs in the tank and we'll see some yeah, rams horns popping up <laughs> they'll be back they the they rams don't... Horns never leave yeah once you've got them you've got them it, it, it's very likely very likely uh zen is back she can pay attention now all right so now that zen is back let's jump into ferts a little bit more so like i said we're gonna we're gonna do kind of an intro to them tonight we will talk about some of the things that were brought up in the chat and then next week we'll uh, go into another topic on FERTS. But just kind of beginning when, when you're talking about fertilizer and putting fertilizer into your tank, there's some terms you'll come across. We want to make sure we kind of mm-hmm. covered that because I'm sure we'll throw them out there and use them. And one of them is mac- macronutrients. And you might see this a lot online, NPK. Um, I know when, <laughs> when Tanner added some information to the notes, He had NPK all over everywhere. And I was like, NPK, NPK. I know I've seen that. What is it? And then it hit me, nitrogen, potassium, or nitrogen, phosphate, and potassium. Uh, So that's what NPK stands for. And that is your major macronutrients. Um, These are the nutrients that your plants need and need a lot of. So they definitely are something you want to be putting in your tank. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. And if you go to, you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, any garden store, and you look at, you know, terrestrial plant fertilizers you'll see you know it'll say 0.5 0.5 0. 0.5 something you know three yeah. three random numbers on the front that will be your npk um that's mainly what people try to target you know nitrogen is for your green growth um phosphorus phosphorus um typically facilitates you know and potassium can facilitate fruiting um and just mm-hmm. different they they help with all different aspects of your plants um, but those, like Mitch said, those are your main three nutrients that plants will uptake the most of. And then yeah. that segues us into micronutrients. Micronutrients, the opposite of macro, use plants uptake much less of those. Now, that being said, that doesn't mean plants can survive without them just because they are micronutrients. Plants need all of these nutrients um, to mm-hmm. thrive. They can have deficiencies and you know you're more than likely able to get away with a deficiency in a micronutrient um without having major you know major issues but a good balance of all of them will help your plants really thrive yeah and another thing about the micros they're probably in your water most Mm -hmm. of them not all of them some of them you're not going to get a lot in your in your local water especially and if you're using ro water then you're stripping the water of everything so you are going to have to add micros but micros are not really like I, we don't test micros we don't pay attention to where micros are you you just you kind of you kind of I'm, that's why you go for the all-in-one right the all-in-one it's in there um we'll talk about that a little bit more but that's that's why they're so much easier as opposed to you know seek him we've talked about seek him a few times when i tried seek him i did not realize that seek him 
it, it's an all inclusive. Not really, because it doesn't have a lot of anything <laughs> like you have to really just kind of pour it in there. Um, but it doesn't have a lot of nitrogen. So I saw nitrogen deficiencies like crazy. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it's just it's a it's a weaker one. What they want and it's it's a brilliant idea. I mean, it's it's great for the really nerdy hobbyist that wants to do this. But what what they want you to do is buy the flourish and then get trace, which is more micros. And then, oh, you need more potassium. Get the bottle of potassium. You need, you know, boron. What? I don't even know if they package boron, but whatever it is, they probably do. I think there's like 12 of those bottles. Um, but Seachem's a system where you kind of mix your own blend. And when I say that, you got to be careful because you can't mix all these. <laughs> you have to like dose on different days when you do it sometimes, depending on what it is you're dosing. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's a whole system. And if you're into doing that and buying $20 bottles, you know, uh, six $20 bottles, or they might be less than that. I feel like they were 12 or 15. I don't know. But th that's a lot of money when for $20 I can get an all-in-one. Right. Yeah, that's definitely, you, you kind of have to be a little, you know, wary of at the end of the day, where you're buying these products from, mm -hmm. wherever it is, the company making them at the end of the day has a bottom line, they need to make a dollar, they're yeah. going to be selling you something. So it's really with, you know, like we've been saying, you can make it as complicated or as simple right. as you want, you can make it as expensive, or as cheap as you want. Exactly. So there's a lot fertilization. There is not one single way to do it. There is right. thousands of ways to fertilize. Um, and you really just have to find that's part of growing throughout the hobby is really finding what methods work for you and tailor them towards your experience and just what, you know, gives you the result you want. Yeah. And 3G, <coughs> welcome to uh, the live stream and the chat interesting conversation i've been in the hobby 40 plus years i don't own test kits or use fertilizers just clueless bumbling and and, and that's the thing about the hobby your water is going to be very different from my water and even my water is different from tanner's water and so what i need and what i don't need could be very different you i i definitely don't have enough potassium to grow uh, a java fern i know that like that that is a fact i cannot grow java fern in my water I need to add more potassium. Um, but for for you, you probably, you know, I don't know if you're on well water or maybe even just your city water has the right mix that everything, or at least maybe not everything, what you're growing works. And that can absolutely be the case for most most people, some people. Um, but it but it's not for, you know, it's not going to be the case for everyone. Um, I wish it was. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would. And, you know, at the end of the day, these plants are from the wild. They grow in the wild. They do not have access to every single right. nutrient in the wild. No, but they do no need one, those three. They do need those three, but no one is out. Mitch isn't out there with his 20 sea chem bottles sitting there with a pipette dosing all the plants in, <laughs> in a river. They, they live, they, they, they grow, you know, uh, two thirds of the plants in the aquarium hobby have, some type of the, you know the word weed in them because they grow like a weed <laughs> yeah well and a lot of them are weeds that's why we have them in the hobby because they do pretty well even on their own so so you can and you can you know you get a bunch of low light plants you don't need a lot of fertilizer you can get by mm -hmm. um without using any as a matter of fact i let the 75 i've not put anything in the in the 75 for over two weeks um nitrates are still up i i've not i've needed to do a water change and haven't been able to get to it with everything I had going on. So I've not put any ferts in, but in my research, I found that's probably not the right thing for me to do. I've probably set myself back by doing that. I should have been, uh, should have been doing the ferts anyway. And if, uh, if nitrates did get high, you know, make a water change happen late one night, that 11 o'clock water change. <laughs> oh yeah. Once, uh, once midnight hit, hit midnight, it suddenly I want to change the water in every tank, rescape the tanks. I don't know. It's like Saturday night at two in the morning. And I've got like driftwood yeah. laying around me and I'm like, what am I doing here? Yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure. The um, funny, funny, funny story real quick. The rocks that I'm trying to put in the 75, I put them in water 
and then tested the water because they did sit out on my yeah. back patio for a little while. A lot of ammonia. My dog got to them. <laughs> so, that, so that was the culprit. Yep. Yep. Because after they, because I, <laughs> I got rid of all the water, had them sitting in the bucket for a little while in the house. And my wife goes, why do those rocks stink? And I walked over there and you could smell it. I was like, oh, wow. So I'm, I'm pouring water on them and <laughs> trying to, trying to get rid of it. Do we need to add that to the uh, fertilization <laughs> method? Well, you know, it with? is ammonia. If you don't have high pH, that could be as a good source. But if you have high pH, <laughs> that could be a problem. Um, so we covered macronutrients, micronutrients. Uh, we talked about NPK, which is, again, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, um, the three main that you're going to need. Um, and then you need to know that some plants feed from different areas. Not all plants are going yes. to pull their nutrients from the same place. So depending on your plant, you may need a different kind of fertilizer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you've got, uh, well, so uh, a lot of plants, a lot of the fast growing plants actually will pull from the water column. So, you know, a liquid fertilizer is going to be your best friend with, you know, with a plant that's pulling from the water column. Uh, floating plants, all your floating plants are pulling from the water column. Now, when I say that, though, just understand that that's not to say it's the only place they pull nutrients from. It's just where they, the main place, most of their nutrients are going to come from there. Because if you let um, frog bit grow those long roots into down to the substrate, it will root into the substrate mm -hmm. and start pulling nutrients. But it, but it, it will pull the majority of its nutrients from the water. And the one interesting thing too, there are some floating plants that actually pull nitrogen from the atmosphere. Similar yeah. to how a clover plant works, it's a nitrogen fixing um, plant. People use it as a cover crop, and you know, we'll chop it and let that fix the nitrogen in the the soil. Some floating plants can actually pull nitrogen from the air, and you. Yeah. So there's a myriad of different ways that plants get nutrients. And yeah. And oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was, I was just going to say that that's why floating plants do so well is because they they do have that nitrogen oxygen option uh, in the air yeah definitely and um also you know they have access to the co2 carbon. and uh yeah extra carbon so there's plants have evolved to pull they have multiple different pathways of which they can uh, obtain nutrients now your stem plants a lot of those are heavy root you know more so root feeders they will mm -hmm. grow aerial roots they will pull you know there's five but there, there's always for a plant there will be a main way, a main pathway that those nutrients are obtained. So take an yeah. Amazon sword, take a crypt, something along those lines, you're going to want to have root tabs or a very nutrient rich substrate to facilitate the, those heavy, it's a heavy root feeder. Now yeah. you take Java fern, Anubias, Bustophilandra, an epiphyte plant. They do have roots. And like Mitch was saying with uh, floating plants, their roots can, you know, burrow down into the substrate but that may the main pathway of which they uptake nutrients will be through their leaves and through those aerial roots where yeah. in that case a liquid fertilizer would be your best best method mm -hmm. yeah so just know that you need to know where your plant is going to be pulling its nutrients because if you've got all root feeders if you've got a tank full of crypts and amazon swords you really don't need to be putting fertilizer into your water column i mean you could put a little it would help but but you don't have to why would you do it if you don't have to right. um, but you are going to have to feed those monsters root tabs my oh, amazon yeah. swords you know, there's some mornings I come through the house and hear them knocking on the tank because I haven't put a root <laughs> tab in there. And, uh, you know, they get they get mad. <laughs> so, oh, look, uh, so no words coming from. Looks like Joe Coffee uses his plecos to fertilize his substrate. Yes, they yeah. are poop machines. <laughs> <laughs> and then Regina yeah. Phalanges is going to be lurking now. They just received their boost plant order. Ooh, Go ahead. What, nice. what did you get? What did you get from boost plant? Give us a uh, They're lurking. They can't answer. Uh, once back. you're done, once you're done unboxing and making sure yeah. all the plants are, are healthy, drop us a comment. What'd you get? I'd love to know. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I see there's been a lot of conversation about root tabs. Root tabs mm -hmm. are good, you know, and, and the different brands of root tabs um, flourish. Seachem's root tabs. I love those. Those are good. I've used those. Um, they're a little pricier than the co-ops root tabs. Um, this is like six. Where's the camera? 60 tablets for is it 20 or 25 dollars? Um, a little cheaper. Uh, still more expensive than other options. And and I keep talking about, I, I prefer the all-in-one. It's not the cheapest option. You can you can definitely mix your own fertilizer um, and, and fertilize your tank a lot cheaper. So, yeah, I guess, Mitch, do you want to go ahead and we can talk about different ways, now that people are talking about root tabs, different ways we can fertilize a tank? Yeah. Um, yep. I know that. One, one we've touched on is liquid fertilizer. That's probably one of the most common methods you will see um, advertised shown by people mitch has some wonderful examples of probably i would say two of the most common fertilizers people get when they first buy a fertilizer for their tank not sponsored not not sponsored uh, but seachem flourish is going to be one of the ones that's the first one i ever bought um, just because i'd seen it it's popular people you know it's a good beginner fertilizer um, so that's, that's a good option. That's going to be one of the ones you're going to, you know, I use it in my tanks. I, I do more of a lean dosing method, which we will talk about on maybe next week's live stream. Right. Um, as we said, this is going to be a multi-part series because fertilization is a massive topic. Um, but you've got your liquid fertilizer for, you know, that feeds the column, the water column. Um, so you've got your Seachem Flourishes, your Easy Green, your Nylock, CG Thrive. Um, you know, there's hundreds of different brands of liquid fertilizers. Mm -hmm. um, you can get an all-in-one. You can get individual nutrients. It really just depends on what you want to do and tailor your experience, you know, tailor it to your, to your needs. Um, and then that leads, you know, root tabs. Well, People be before oh, before we leave... Sorry, before yes. we leave liquid fertilizers, they are all a lot alike. You're just going to have a little bit of differences in their formula. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got a little something that they focused on a little bit more. Um, probably not anything wild other than the fact that some of them don't have a lot of nitrogen. That's one of the big differences in, in some. You have some that go really low. So here's, here's the thought process there. If you have a lot of fish, they're producing some nitrogen. So you don't want to put a product out there that's too heavy in nitrogen because mm -hmm. then you're causing issues. Right. Um, but at the same time, most of your nitrogen really needs to be coming from your um, fertilizer rather than from the fish poo. Uh, just because the fertilizer has all the other nutrients in it and the fish poo probably doesn't um, just those main three. So that's kind of a, a difference between some of them, but for the most part, they're all pretty much the same, pretty close. But there is a reason why some people, because I see this all the time online, there is a reason why some people will say, oh, I hate that product. It, it All I got was algae out of it. And then somebody else immediately after them will praise it because it worked great for them. And it just has to do with water chemistry and what is actually in that bottle. Mm -hmm. So if, if you've been using an all-in-one and it's not working for you, try another one. It, it might, you know, the next one might be the best one for you. Um, I, I, I just... You know, I would try different ones. The Easy Green has worked for me. My algae, you know, I don't have a lot of algae issues other than, you know, I had the black beard at one point. But even that, I'd never changed my dosing. Um, I just changed my light. So, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Real quick, um, Joe Coffee says he has snails in all of his tanks and he loves them but the people in his club do not. Is there a quick and easy way to desnail plants before bringing them to trade? So mm. I see all things fish mentioned a potassium permanganate dip. That's a good method. That, that is an oxidizer. Um, it will, you know, work similar to a hydrogen peroxide and to take care of those um, snails. Alum dip is pretty common as well. Um, it, it, like, like all things fish says, it is a little bit harsher. Um, Craig's Catfish Cave says a bleach dip. Um, what I would do in my experience and what I have done is you could do a bleach dip, you could do a hydrogen peroxide dip, um, and, or the, the alum. Um, but the one thing you want to be really careful with is it depends on the type of plant. 
things that are, um, you know, in my mind, more simple plants like mosses um, are going to be a lot more sensitive to those dips. So be careful with that. Um, I would use anything you do. I would dilute more than what is you find online just to be safe and do yeah. a test. Do a five minute, five minute dip. See what happens. Do 10 minutes. But the longer you go, the more you're going to you know, increase that risk. I've melted plants before. I did a hydrogen peroxide dip last week to get rid of some algae and I melted a very nice piece of boost and salvaged some of it, but I was sad. But yeah. so anyways, there, there are several different options you can go and the people in the comments have definitely listed some uh, pretty good methods. You can look up online the some recommended dilutions. You know, for example, if you're using hydrogen peroxide, you can take the 3% um, peroxide, which is generally what's sold in most stores. Yeah. Um, I would do, you know, five, 10 mils of that in, you know, a cup of water, see where that gets you and then just kind of play around with it from there. Um, Definitely cut it. Don't, yes, don't use I straight do, peroxide. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Someone hey, hey, on a forum, someone said it worked early on in the hobby. I tried it. Did not work. It actually, it did. That tank was pristine for a few hours, and then everything melted. <laughs> and then everything melted away. Yeah, and then that, of course, produced algae. Uh, Regina Falange says the box was only lava rock. <laughs> well, that's not the uh, boost plant haul I was hoping for. No, I'm, I'm just messing. Love some good lava rock. Hopefully, your plants will arrive tomorrow. Looks like you got some Anubius boost. Crypt loosens and more. I love the crypt loosens. Um, love all crypts, but crypt loosens is definitely a very cool, cool plant. Um, but yeah, back to back to what you were talking about. Different, you know, you just got to try it out with the fertilizers. Different fertilizers going to work different for you. Mm -hmm. um, but for on on the root tabs, um, there's many different ways. Uh, you've got the you know many different brands. That, look at them they're all mostly going to be similar one of my more uh recent ventures has been using the osmocote um it's actually yeah. a, a terrestrial you know a garden fertilizer make sure you get the osmocote plus it, it means it's for um I believe edible you know foods that you're eating not ornamental plants right get, um, get something because you want it to be food safe for your inhabitants yes so something that you you eat <laughs> not not eat it but you would eat yeah, something from don't it. don't eat the plants from your aquarium um <laughs> disclaimer i cannot um mitch and i cannot promote eating aquarium plants um although i don't know that's bad either because i've I, never tried yeah, it so and that, that's i we we have no knowledge on that fact even though quite a few of the plants are actually aquatic herbs yeah um, like bacopa i think they i was talking with someone and they told me that they sell bacopa at one of the uh um uh, uh, one of the asian markets i think it's sunrise um market oh, in yeah. knoxville they sell bacopa tea so heard it was okay. not very, very i heard it was not very tasty but it yeah. is sold <laughs> so that's, that's interesting we might have to do that just just to do it on the on the stream. Let's have some have Bacopa a, tea. A Bacopa tea live stream. I would just Bacopa people... tea party. <laughs> All things fish says straight peroxide dip better be quick. Yes. Yeah. So um, the recommendation was a full minute in the uh, in the dip, which you know is kind of quick, but it was full three percent concentration. So. Yeah, they looked good. They looked real good until they didn't. I'll tell you but. tell you something I do with the the peroxide, <laughs> which may not probably I probably wouldn't recommend other people to do that just because I um don't know what your results will be. But I'll put a little spray, you know, I'll mix up probably 50-50 hydrogen peroxide and, and tank water and actually spray when i'm doing a water change if i've got some real nuisance algae i'll actually spray some of the plants um, with that hydrogen peroxide mixture and then after i fill the tank up you know it dissipates but your concentrations can vary 
greatly yeah. doing that. So do it at your own risk. But that's something. But root tabs. <laughs> yes. Back to root tabs. Back to root tabs. Yeah. They are. So you've the- done the DIY. I've thought about doing it, but I, I don't know. Like I said, to me, the I, I know it's cheaper. I don't know how much. I don't know how much you think you're getting 60 tabs for that way. I know it's a lot cheaper. It's nowhere near like $20. It's probably like five. <laughs> yeah. It's, that's a pretty good size bag. Yeah. And then what you can do is I actually just sprinkled it on the bottom of a tank. Um, right. Or, you know, below. So you the didn't put them in a cap- gel capsule. Uh, I did, Well, I did both. Oh, okay. So I sprinkled it on the bottom of a tank, you know, when you're starting a fresh tank um doing a new skate do it on the like bottom on the glass very bottom of the tank and then cap it with substrate so you're not leaching anything into the water column and then what you can do is you can pack those in the gel capsules that you know is sold online and various different places but pack those and then after the tank's already established you can just take your forceps or fingers or whatever push them down under the soil and they work I've had some pretty good success with them. I will yeah. say that starting out, I did have a pretty high nitrate spike. Oh, yeah. um, not anything crazy. I think it got up to 30, but oh, that okay. was just, still, that was more, yeah. more than I had seen in my experience with that, you know, given from tank. adding root tabs. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, and I think some sure. of that was, I did not have them um, it, pro- it, properly capped sand. off. Oh, you you weren't using sand. I was using sand, but I it's in the tank with my cribs, and oh, okay. with the way that they dig, I believe that they exposed yep. some of that. So for sure, just make sure you know when you're using root tabs, if you don't want a bunch of nutrients in the water column, try and you know make sure they're they've got a good cap, they're capped yeah. off well. I, I laughed at this earlier, so I got to put it up there. Duckweed soup is delicious. That is an abomination. <laughs> I don't, uh, maybe that's a real thing. I don't know. I, I've got plenty. Uh, you know what? If, if it ever come down to it, I got so much duckweed, I could live for a year. You could feed your family just off duckweed. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that on, might kids. be a real thing. I don't know. <laughs> come on kids. Duckweed soup for the fifth time this week. <laughs> Our only meal of the day, duckweed soup. Um, uh, before- root tabs. Like I said, I, I like, um, I like CKIMs. They're great. And there's a big difference in CKIMs and those gel caplets because CKIM has like, it's a, it's a solid brick. When I say brick though, it's like that big right there. And um, so it's real easy to get it down the substrate and not have a problem. And it sticks in the substrate really good, really well, really good, really good, really well. Um, As opposed to the gel caplets, capsules, not caplets, capsules. People have trouble with them. There's there's a few hacks though. Like I've mm-hmm. I have an applicator that I use that works really well that I don't have a video out for yet. Um, that I got from the Aquarium Co-op forum and it's it's awesome. And then another one is people will take a pin like a you know a, ow that hurt pin so the sewing needle I don't know a pin and put a little hole in each end of the capsule. And when you put it down in the water, that's going to allow that air that's trapped in it. Mm-hmm. Why they float up? Yeah, I didn't even tell you they float, but th- that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes <laughs> they float, and to get them down, people will do that. And I even heard of people squeezing them a little bit to get the air out. But uh, that was a good tip. I gotta go let the dog back in. I'm I, I can hear you. I'm just going. Okay. Let's see. So Regina Flange says they are setting up a 75 gallon tank at their shop, obviously planted. That is awesome. Not sure which inhabitants, so many options. You should do a rainbow fish tank. That's I'm a little biased towards it, but I think that would be a fantastic option. Then Joe Coffee says, getting your filet mignon wrapped in jungle vow is much better and healthier than wrapped in bacon i don't know about you but i do not want to be eating jungle vow i don't care how tall it gets (laughs) 
Let's see. We're, we've got about six minutes left, and it looks like Mitch's internet has gone out. We can't escape the curse of Mitch's painful internet connection, but that's all right. Um, we'll, I'll go ahead and talk about the uh, next way to fertilize your tank, and that's going to be soil. Um, you can use, you know, if you if any of y'all are familiar with the Wallstad method, um, popularized and created by Diana Wallstad, that's an excellent method using a organic potting soil um, to in an organic potting soil to fertilize your tank. And the method is, there's more to the method besides that. Um, but organic potting soil is an excellent way to fertilize your tank. Make sure to cap it off with a sand layer just to make sure you're not leaching tons of nutrients into the water column. But that's a very cheap and easy way to get a ton of nutrients into your substrate versus, you know, aqua soil is in my opinion, very expensive. Um, so that's definitely one method that you can use to fertilize your tank. Um, we may go into it a little more detail in the next stream since we're run out of time. Um, the last one I want to touch on is going to be dry ferts. And while we're paused for a second, I want to say welcome to Liquid Zoo. Thanks for joining us. And we've got Mitch back the internet <laughs> yep what's funny about it it's not funny at all but what is funny about it is when it happens you freeze and i don't so for a moment i'm like oh is, is tanner out or or am i out i don't know and then you know everything starts kicking out and going blank so yeah it's me um let me get this off the screen hey matt did you say matt was here yes Cool. Yes, I, I welcomed Matt. I just briefly touched on soil as okay. a fertilization method. I wanted to get through kind of what we what we had, and we may I was thinking we may touch on them more next next stream. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the um, I, I've never done it. I know there's one person in our club um jason who that's all he does and he swears by it. and I, I think he uses osmocote in in what it, in mm -hmm. whatever he uses um so i'm very interested in it it's something that i would like to try and when i do the 20 longs i may actually do one dirty tank it, it i'm just i'm trying to think of some ideas i'm definitely going to do something sand um because i've always just done gravel um but yeah a lot of my initial tanks were dirted tanks and most of my tanks now the substrate mix does have a little bit of soil in it um for mm -hmm. the base layer um let's see all things fish says lots of people were using loose soil substrate before diana wrote her book about it mm -hmm. um joe coffee dry furts intimidate me i used to be a pro in undergrad chem lab but dang <laughs> i'm just too scared to mess something up yeah. Yes. Um, dry ferts are not a very common thing used, you know, done in the hobby by a lot of people um, because they are intimidating. I will say they are probably one of the more, you know, cheap, more cost effective ways to fertilize a tank with, um, yeah. you know, higher end ferts just because all of the liquid fertilizers you're buying are using those li those dry salts, those dry nutrient yeah. salts. They're just in the, you know, they add water to them. Um, well, it, water in a stabilizer. Mm. And I think that's one thing to, because you can't just mix up your own ferts in water and be ready to go. There is, there is an agent in this that keeps all of those components from, I don't know, melting down and going nuclear reactor. I'm not sure well, what would happen, but well, I hear it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> what will happen with a lot of them depend well it also depends on what all you know i wouldn't mix all of them into one bottle i would kind of separate right. them out what what will happen over time and you, you you tend to see in your your for you know liquid fertilizers is they start to crystallize they start yeah. to um, drop out of solution and that's basically what that stabilizer does for the most part um, but dry ferts are definitely you know it'd be something that i would mix up you know probably before right before 
I'm adding it to the tank. It wouldn't be something that I would make up a whole big batch and then leave it for a year. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's definitely, it's, it is a little more difficult. You have to pay a a little bit more attention, but it's cheap. It is cheap. And all things fish says I use dry ferts to EI dose my 125 and 20 bucks in ferts will run the tank well over a year. Yep. Yep. That's the thing. I probably, I probably, I could, I could look, I could look, I, I, I don't go through four. I'll probably go through three of these in a year, just on the 75. That's all I had though. Just the 75. And I'm sure you're probably doing a lot more tanks, all things fish. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, that's $20 a bottle. So, you know, the all in one's not the cheapest option. That's what I was trying to say earlier. The dry ferts or even the soil may be cheaper options for you. Um, but, uh, you know, and there are websites and I've not dug into this too much yet, but I've come across websites and even calculators to help you make your fertilizer concoctions. Um, so there's, there's ways to get help. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's based, well, it is, it is chemistry. You're Mm -hmm. doing conversions to get to your, you know, desired dosage, um, Mm -hmm. Let's see. But yeah, definitely those wondering. dry ferts. If you have a lot of tanks and you're dosing on all the tanks, that'd be the way to go. If I just have a couple tanks and I'm not dosing a ton, I'm going to buy a liquid fertilizer if that's yeah. the route I go down just because of convenience. Yeah, because like like the like the Seachem, like Flourish, you know, uh, with, with those, you're having to mix, like you said, multiple uh, mixtures to, to dose. I, I think there's some you can mix together and and some you absolutely should not. Um, but you're you're still you're mixing and you're having it, my understanding is you'd have to dose some minerals on different days because you can't shouldn't put them in at the same time. So um, I mean there, there's just a convenience factor. You're paying for the convenience factor with the liquid. Um, and there are plenty of other brands, not just Aquarium Co-op. It's just the one that I happen to be using. I did see, I want to talk about this for a minute. Regina Falange says, I'm going to try the soil substrate and mesh bags underneath smooth gravel and or sand. And I initially I think, wow, that, that's a really good idea to keep it from leaching. But the one thing I would worry about is anytime I pull crypts or Amazon sort out of my soil, those roots, I, I'm not certain you wouldn't have a mess with plants just rooted in that. Yeah, I've seen that. Um... <sighs> Who is there's there's a guy on YouTube, uh, MD Fish Tanks, who does that, and he's shown okay. where he's broken down tanks, and the roots will go all throughout. But depending on what size mesh you use, it'll kind of keep it all, you know, compact. Okay. Um, but it really just that's the one thing about a dirted tank. Once everything's real rooted and established, it's very hard to, you know, rearrange. If you're someone who like who is like me that likes to move around plants and try them in different locations then it's just a pain in a soil tank because you've got dirt everywhere. Yeah. The puppy says 930. It's time for him to play. I can't live stream <laughs> anymore. Uh, he's over here playing rough with one of his toy, toys. Um, I was also going to look at... Yeah. Well, that, that's interesting. I'll have to watch those videos because I, I'd like to see how that works. I've not watched those. It was MD. Is that what you said, MD? Yeah, MD, MD, MD Fish Tanks. Okay. The, I've watched uh, some of their videos. Yeah. Yeah, so All Things Fish says, Excel Glute is used pretty often as a anti-microbial uh, to avoid critters in a furt mix. <laughs> I personally either mix separate days uh, the week of or just dose straight to the tank in a high flow area. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that that's the thing. You, you, you just got to kind of you know learn what's going to work best for you and then yeah you you have thrive for your wife so that they don't have to do that that's that's a very good idea (laughs) that is i've had i've had to do it before yeah uh, that's one thing i like about the pump head you know a lot of a lot of your fertilizers will use these pump heads now and you do need to take this off and clean it every now and then and by clean it all i do is I stick it down in the tank and, and squirt some water through it to just to make sure it doesn't get 
anything hardened in and then mess up the dosing. Not that it could be too far off. I don't think it would ever be a real problem, but I do that every now and then. Yeah. One thing I like to do is I've got a similar, not the same as the easy green, but you can also take like a, the measuring, the, the measuring shot glasses, you know, they yeah, have I have those measurement lines yeah. on it and then do a pump into it and see how much it pumps out just to make yeah, sure, you, you know, it's it. still, still accurate. Um, now something that I'm going to try, and I don't know if this actually falls into, no, it'll be next week. I'll talk about it next week. I'm trying something right now. It's an experiment for me and I'll talk about it next week. All right. So that's other than talking about the specific nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, iron, calcium, magnesium, and other micronutrients, other than actually going through and talking about those, we covered everything else we had in this uh, episode. So if we feel like, if we feel like we need to go through that, we can, um, uh, next week we can, we can add that to the conversation. Mm -hmm. I, I do want to ask, we've seen a lot of people, uh, in the chat talking about what they use. So for those of you in the replay, if you want to put in the comment section, uh, what, what kind of fertilizer do you use? What do you prefer? Uh, is there one that works best for you or is there something that, that you, that didn't work for you? Um, put that in the comments. I'd love to, love to have that conversation. Darlene's tanks just got here. You will have to watch on the replay. Thank you though. Yes. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who watches the replays. Thank you to yep. everyone who joins us live next week. We're going to be talking about methods of yep. fertilizing. Um, and I will give some Mitch, Mitch and I will give some insight into the ways that we fertilize our own tanks and why yep. we do that. Yeah, so. mine's going to be very quick and easy. <laughs> <laughs> so Tanner's, Tanner's got a lot more information for judging from the <laughs> notes. So I'm going to have to make some stuff up and add it to the notes. Mine, we're going to uh, have a good time. Yes, yeah. My method has evolved over the past couple of years to, you know, it doesn't fit into the, any I, exact method, but yeah. it uh, it works for me. So, oh yeah, I came guys. across so many methods looking into this and some that I still don't quite understand what I read. Um, I need to run those by you. I said, I think I saw Zinni mention them. I sent them to, to her and, uh, so that we could use the link. Um, cause I thought I was actually going to talk about it a little bit more, but we did get into some of it, but anyway, that's gotta be it. We've got to go. Thank you everyone in the chat. Thank you everyone on the replay. Yeah. Every, you, you all are awesome. If, if you would subscribe. And uh, I'll try to get a video out ASAP on the swap. Yes. I, I can't wait to share it because I haven't shown any, anybody anything that I got except for there's some shorts. <laughs> anyway, I, we got to go. I, I, I'll yep. talk all night. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> See ya. Enjoy your tanks. And stay scruffy.